Hi, welcome back. In this video, we'll create materials and set up the final render. First, I applied a cloth surface to the donut mesh to give it 1 cm of thickness. As you can see, the mesh is now thicker, adding more depth and complexity to the final render. I also applied cloth surface to the flying pieces. Now let's take a look at the laser. To render the laser rays, we need to add a redshift object tag to the tracer. Set the mode to hair strands. It's optimized for rendering large numbers of lines like these efficiently. The thickness is kept very small to create a clean, sharp look for the laser ray. The scale setting starts the thickness at 0.06 on one end and gradually tapers it down to zero. Interpolation is set to precise. I tried using fast mode, but the laser didn't render properly, so I guess that's just how it works. Let's move on to the particles. To render them, simply add a redshift object tag to the particle group. Set the mode to point instances and use a small scale multiplier like this. You may notice there's a matrix here. That's because in version 2025.1, I ran into issues when using Cloner to place lasers on an animated vertex map. So instead, I used a matrix with a point selection. I recommend using the method shown in tutorial number two. It's much more straightforward. Let's take a look at the scene setup. I have several cameras in the scene, each showing a different angle. The last one is animated. It moves along a curve using a line to spline. That's it for the camera setup. Now, let's move on to the environment. These backgrounds were from an earlier version of the scene. I ended up removing them. These floating elements are either dust or bokeh. I simply used a cloner to scatter many small spheres in the air. When using a camera with shallow depth of field, we get the bokeh effect. To make it more obvious, let's increase the size of these spheres. As you can see, it gets pretty dense and quite expensive to render. You don't have to use this method. If the camera is static, I think you can fake it in post. This random field helps randomize the sphere's positions. Their position values are also animated to make the dust appear as if it's floating. I created two versions of the bokeh setup. This one was made specifically for camera 3. Now, let's move on to the materials. First, we have the laser material. It's just a simple incandescent shader with an alpha below one to keep the beam slightly transparent. The same material is applied to the particles. This is the x-ray material used on the donut. It's a two-layer setup. The base layer is the x-ray material. By connecting the Fresnel shader to the opacity channel, we get the x-ray effect. The black areas become invisible, like this. 
that's the base layer. We then use a material layer shader to blend two materials. The top layer is a brighter incandescent shader. You can see the transition between the two layers here. It's controlled by a mask. I use this vertex map as the mask. Just drag the vertex map into the input here. This black and white gradient controls the spread. The constellation lines also use the X-ray material. These are the dust materials, also simple incandescent shaders. I created two versions. The first has intensity set to 1. The second is the same material but with higher intensity. The brightness affects the size of the bokeh in the render. Now for the camera settings. I use the low aperture to get a shallow depth of field. These chat box for bokeh must be enabled too. Now Let's talk render settings. I couldn't get clean bokeh using manual sampling, so I ended up using automatic sampling with a very low threshold, and I also had to enable denoise. Since the scene has no reflection or refraction, I set both of those values to zero. That's it. Very simple. I also turned on bloom. It's super important for this kind of visual effect. That's the end of the series. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it.